My name is Jeff White and I'm a co-chair of the Canadian Elder Law Conference that's going to be held here in Vancouver on November the 2nd and 3rd of 2017. And along with my co-chairs, Jan Goddard and Hugh McClellan, I'd like to invite you to come and I'd like to tell you why I think you might want to attend. There's two reasons. Demographics. We all know that elders are a growing and the fastest growing segment of our population. If you're not an elder law lawyer now, you probably will be in the future. Also, it's an area of increasing complexity. There are many different trends that are affecting us. So we've brought together the leading experts across the country, judiciary, leaders from the not-for-profit community, and people from overseas and academics to talk about what these complexities are, to explain them, and to learn from each other. The other great reason to be at this conference, of course, is that with all these people in the same room, you're going to develop relationships and connections. I can tell you that having been at the conference for many years, these connections span back decades and will go forward into the future and will be very valuable for your practice as you move forward. So our Canadian Elder Law Conference this year, again, is coming after a two-year span. And that's one of the things that makes this conference particularly unique. Every two years, we get together all of these leading experts to talk about what the trends are and what are happening in our community and what we need to do about it. I'm particularly excited about this year because we're going to be focusing on some trends that are very, very topical. Capacity, we know, is one of the fundamental issues of a state law. The Law Reform Commission of Ontario has released a report and we're bringing together experts to talk about that capacity issue, where it's going and how it's going to affect your practice. We also know that last year we had the federal legislation about medical assistance in dying. There's been many issues about that. We've brought together physicians to talk about what the practical implications that they are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. We're bringing other experts together to talk about the thorny issue about advanced consent and what the perspectives are on both sides. And then finally, we've invited some people to come and talk about financial investing from two different perspectives. What do you do with a client who is starting to have diminished capacity and how can you support them in making those investment decisions? But also quite compellingly, we have another expert whose specialty is suing for negligence in providing advice for financial experts. So what happens when it goes wrong if you happen to be one of the advisors or a client who has made a loss or the lawyer advising them? So I'm sometimes asked, who would be the ones that want to come to this conference? Well, being elder law, we mainly focus on lawyers, but it's not just lawyers. Um, others in the financial industry and healthcare professions and service professions to elders might also be interested. But focusing on the lawyers, we really do have something for everyone. On the litigation side, you'll hear from Justice Adele Kent about what judges are looking for and how to help them understand the case law that applies in elder law situations. You'll hear about the unique law of evidence and what some of the tools are that are available to make sure that you can put the best case forward for your elder law clients and deal with them if you happen to be on the other side. We'll also talk about mediation and the unique context of uh, power dynamics and uh, being aware of a bias that can sometimes happen in those. And we'll hear from experts about how you can be effective through mediation, which as we understand as litigators, is one of the most common tools that we use for resolving these disputes. And if you're a solicitor, of course, we've got lots there too. I've already spoken a bit about the Law Reform Commission's issues about capacity and how that broadly affects decision making. But also we'll talk a bit about undue influence. So even when there is capacity, how can you make sure that you're not going to be brought into a situation where your client is being forced or coerced to doing something that they don't want to do? And then uh, finally, we'll also talk a little bit about uh, some of the other issues that come up with self-regulation um, and self-neglect. And so sometimes we have clients who aren't being abused by someone else, but might be self-abusing or not taking care of themselves in the best way that they should. And what tools are out there to make sure that we can support that client and get them the help that they need? We'll be talking about all of these things at our conference. So you may know that I'm actually a new chair to this conference. Uh, Jan uh, Goddard and Hugh McLeod have been doing this for a while. And so you might ask why uh, did I decide to become a co-chair along with them? Well, I think I can speak for all of us as the chairs to say that this is something that we're very committed to. All three of us have been involved as either uh, chairs or executive of our national CBA elder law uh, community and section for a long time. Um, and it's a commitment that we have because I think we strongly believe that we have an obligation to leave our community better than it was given to us. We have an obligation to see and to analyze these problems that we see and try to find solutions for them. And you know, it's interesting, it seems altruistic to say that, but in some ways, it's actually for our own self-benefit. Because unlike a lot of the charitable or uh, uh, community building work that we do, 
we're actually going to benefit from this day someday when we get older, as we all are going to do and hope to do. Um, and so I want to be uh, sitting someday, uh, getting the care and getting the services that I think my clients deserve. And I'd like to know that I had a little bit of a role in making that happen. And if you are like me, as I think you are, um, you share that belief. And coming to this conference and helping us promote and share these ideas is a great way to make that happen. So the other reason that I'm the chair is because I'm looking forward to seeing you and to seeing you at our conference. On behalf of myself and Jan and Hugh, we hope you'll join us online or in person on November 2nd and 3rd at the CLEBC and CCEL Canadian Elder Law Conference.